Maybe there was some hope for pirate movies back when this franchise was on the rise, but it seems that now nobody is really interested in them. Occasionally, there will be a stray pirate movie released, but most of the time, they fail at the box office. And even before Pirates of the Caribbean, such movies were not considered very desirable. All the previous ones weren't successful neither commercially nor critically, so major studios would rarely so much as think about creating them. The success of The Curse of the Black Pearl was a miracle. One of the things that made Pirates of the Caribbean different is the amount of work put into them to make every aspect of the movies as great as possible, and one of these is the action. These are blockbusters that are meant to impress you and they achieve this almost effortlessly. The action sequences are always well staged and very entertaining. You will also notice visual gags which are essential in movies that rely on comedy a lot too. Action is also an integral part of the story and it is never too tiresome, so you will always feel like it is just the way it is supposed to be. Alright, the humor in this franchise is actually decent. In fact, it is pretty good and can cheer you up pretty well, especially when you are watching these movies for the first time. That being said, some jokes might feel a little outdated, so to say. At the same time, those who have seen the movies several times before, or even only once before, will probably feel that the jokes are not as funny. This is absolutely normal because you remember them to some extent and they don't strike as they did during the first viewing. Diversity is one of the key elements in today's movies. Everyone is trying to include more women, people of color, and members of the LGBT community both in front of and behind the camera. Pirates of the Caribbean actually tackle this objective pretty well. One of the central characters is a strong woman, but there are also many interesting secondary female characters. We also get to see pirates of different ethnicities both as good and bad characters. Some could even argue that queer theory could be applied to several characters as well. One of the biggest problems in films is that screenwriters sometimes go overboard with their story or, on the contrary, don't put enough effort into it and forget some crucial information. Both of these can lead to confusing storylines which, to some extent, happened with the franchise. Sometimes it is unclear where the story is headed. Some character actions are illogical and certain scenes seem to be irrelevant. The fifth movie even seems to forget about the rules established in the earlier movies which completely breaks the story. Though the CGI didn't try to become something completely mind-blowing, it was still extremely realistic and impressive for its time. Even to this day, it looks absolutely stunning which only adds up to all the good elements the franchise has. The character designs are great and very detailed. Davy Jones and his crew are terrifying, but even the undead crew of the Black Pearl in the first film is something otherworldly. The final battle in the third movie and the mermaids in the fourth are definitely worth it too. The situation with the cast is somewhat similar to the situation with the humor, it's all relative. Pirates of the Caribbean has some big names like Johnny Depp, Orlando Bloom, Kira Knightley, Bill Nye, Jeffrey Rush, Javier Bardem, and others. However, many secondary characters are played by actors and actresses you probably didn't see in other projects. Moreover, some of the big stars are not as relevant as they used to be either. Of course, they continue acting, but you won't see them often. As mentioned earlier, diversity is a very important matter in the film industry of our days. But what is worth highlighting is the fact that Kira Knightley portrays Elizabeth Swan who is a strong female lead during the majority of the franchise. Not only does she prove that she is someone to be reckoned with even though she is a woman living in a period when women had next to no rights. Elizabeth is smart, strong, both physically and emotionally, knows what she wants and how to get it, and is always determined and hardworking. It seems that the Pirates of the Caribbean could not avoid the dreadful fate of many franchises, unnecessary sequels. Even now, the studio is considering either making the sixth film or rebooting the franchise altogether, and either, it's probably not a good idea. The first movie was originally meant to be standalone. It was then made into a complete trilogy. But a fourth film and then a fifth stretched the franchise even more. There is no doubt that the sequels were the result of unending commercial success. 
One of the reasons for the first film's success is that it took the classic hero's journey and told it again in a new way. People like seeing what they already saw if it is given in a new, original way, and Pirates of the Caribbean succeeded in doing this. Will is our main hero, Elizabeth is the heroine, Jack is both the best friend and the mentor, Barbossa is the villain, and so on. There are challenges, there are adventures, there are aims to be achieved, and there are unexpected plot twists. I will be the first to admit, I have an obsession with Pirates of the Caribbean movies and pirates in general. For as long as I can remember I have always loved pirates. Whenever my family would travel to Ocracoke, pirates were the only thing I would have on my mind. I was just enthralled with them. Between guns, ships, treasure, parrots, and swords, there is not much for a young boy to dislike about pirates. When the first movie, Curse of the Black Pearl, came out, I was very enthusiastic to go see it. Though I was young and a few of the scenes scared me, I was quite fond of the movie. I have rewatched the first movie dozens of times, and watched all of the others at least once. I may be partial to this film series, but I do have some facts too as why they are the best movies ever made. Below are some reasons, in my opinion, as to why Pirates of the Caribbean is the greatest movie franchise of all time. Johnny Depp, Kira Knightley, and Orlando Bloom make up one of the most legendary movie casts of my generation. The real Captain Jack Sparrow could not have played himself better than Johnny Depp. The movements, sayings, and characteristics all were perfect. The beautiful Kira and Knightley can play both sides of Elizabeth Swan, the prissy upper-class governor's daughter to the tomboy pirate. She blends her acting perfectly with Bloom's character, William Turner. William Turner is a sword maker who later joins Sparrow's crew. The kind-hearted blacksmith who has some pirate blood is wonderfully portrayed by Bloom. The whole cast mixes very well and it shows in the movie. One of the greatest parts of the movies are the settings in which they take place. The first movie was filmed in St. Vincent and they could not have picked a better place to set the movie. The beauty of the surroundings alone was amazing enough to win an Academy Award. The following films were filmed in a variety of locations that include Dominica, Bahamas, California, and Hawaii. The cast even helped pick some of the locations where they filmed. When watching a movie that is filmed by the sea, I automatically fall in love with it and this is no exception. One thing I really loved about Pirates of the Caribbean are the costumes. They were not the stereotypical and cheesy pirate costumes that you can purchase at your local Walmart around Halloween. The costumes incorporated historical elements of real pirates' wardrobes, making every fan of pirates want to dress like Jack Sparrow even more. The accessories donned by the cast such as guns, swords, cannons, and animals matched perfectly and added to the overall effect. The directors and writers also get creativity points in my book for giving Hector Barbasa a pet spider monkey. The creepy monkey made Barbasa even scarier. All in all, the costumes played a small, but impactful part in the movie's success. POTC has dominated the special effect game for nearly 14 years now. With the exception of a few movies such as The Avatar and Inception, would say POTC is number one on the list. Between the skeleton crew, octopus beards, and Bill Strap Boots Turner, the entire film series has had some spectacular special effects. Hal Hickel was the animation supervisor for the first movie, and had some brilliant ideas when it came to the effects which required advanced technology and specialized technicians. Pirates of the Caribbean, on Stranger Tides, had a budget of $250 million and a huge portion of that budget went to the special effects. Overall the special effects in the movies really add an extra element of action for the viewers. In my opinion, Jack Sparrow is the greatest Disney character of all time, hands down. He is a perfect mixture between a comedian and a cold-blooded pirate. Jack's character boasts elements of kindness, cunningness, cleverness, and funniness. The way he walks, talks, acts, and thinks are all very pirate-like. He transitions from a completely selfish, ruthless pirate to one who thinks of others, all while maintaining his bad boy pirate attitude. He is by far the coolest character in the movie.